when farmers like Mr. Rankins were preparing for the livestock competition at the state fair. And George was helping. I have high hopes for you, Ulysses. I think you're going to win a blue ribbon this year. But, Grandpa, your animals always win blue ribbons. Yeah! Allie was right. Every animal did have a blue ribbon. Every animal, except Howie the hog. Hey, ha, ha. Yeah, where's Howie's blue ribbon? <laughs> Howie wanted a ribbon more than anything, but somehow it never happened. Uh, I've entered Howie a couple of times. He always starts out eager, don't you? <laughs> but I guess he doesn't want the ribbon bad enough to train for it, do you, Howie? <sighs> He's so disappointed when he loses. I don't have the heart to train him again. George, maybe we could train Howie. Grandpa! Here's the rule book. Good luck. Washing a pig was easy. And the second step was a breeze. Go! <laughs> Almost. Well, how's it going? <laughs> Look, Grandpa, we got Howie washed and brushed. Oh, that's the easy part. Well, good luck with the third step. Mm. Looks like we walk Howie for 30 minutes and poke him with a stick. <gasps> poke him with a stick? <laughs> No wonder how he didn't like training. Allie, George, lunch! But, Grandpa, why do we have to poke Howie? Well, if there's another way to get a hog to exercise for half an hour, I'm all ears. Hmm. There had to be another way. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to think when there's a pig snout tickling your ear. a way to get a hog to move without a stick. It was called an apple. <laughs> Coming! <laughs> <laughs> Training hogs with treats was easy. <laughs> Unless your hog was higher than your treat. George knew how to get the treat taller. blue ribbon all right, but exercising made him really hot. <laughs> and the mud was so cool. Oh, Howie stopped exercising again. Maybe he gets too hot. And he needs another bath. <laughs> for Howie to exercise. <laughs> oh, I know. Grandma's living room is nice and cool. Howie can exercise there. For George, 
it was the perfect kind of day to go to a fair. George, okay, you've got your sunglasses, your water bottle. Uh -huh. I can't think of anything else we need. It's fair time. Allie, what's with all the stuff? It's my school fair survival kit. I got everything I need to have the best fair day ever. Wow. I got water, suntan lotion, mustard, ketchup, chair, tissues. This is to hold my lemonade. And what's in the backpack? Nothing. It's empty. Why are you bringing an empty backpack? Well, you never know what'll happen at a fair. One day I brought home a pet pig. <laughs> what should we do first? Mm, let's see. Uh, there's a craft table over there. I see face painting. <gasps> wow, look at that bear. We'll be here all weekend. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Dr. Percival Higginbotham. I named him on the walk over. Step right up to Mr. Quint's Duck Game. Wow. Well, hello there. Ah. Hi, Mr. Quint. Wow. How do we play it? Well, you knock down all seven ducks, and the bear is yours. Well, what are we waiting for? Ah. Have fun. George, get ready to count. <laughs> Counting the successful tosses was easy for George because Allie didn't have any. I'm just getting warmed up. Let me try that again. better give someone else a chance. Now you can come back later, you know. We'll be here all weekend. How could something that looks so easy be so hard? George knew why Allie didn't knock down the ducks. She needed practice. First, George would build a practice game for Allie. He just needed some ducks, but he only had one rubber duck. Where could he get seven ducks that looked alike? There must be something he could use to make some ducks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven ducks. And then, George filled some bags with rice for Allie to throw. George knew that anyone could get better with practice. <laughs> All right, but I'm telling you, if I throw this, there's no way I'm going to knock down a cardboard. <gasps> Duck? Ah! Hey, <laughs> did I do that? Maybe I should quit while I'm ahead. Okay. <laughs> oh, missed again. <laughs> okay. Hero alone. Mission, find the one and restore it to its rightful place. Mere guards can't stop fearless George. <laughs> He's tracked the one of ones to here. 
the lair of the Dark Betsy. Professor Buford Fromage, famous for smartness. Yay! Ooh. Help! Ah! I am free! <laughs> and sore. <laughs> Even though Fromage is free, you will never get the one of ones back. <laughs> She's right. You'll never find it. Because you'll never get past my big brass bubbly butt! Ah! <gasps> ah! Hey! Ah! Time out! Time out, Steve! Whoosh! Clank! You mean Professor Fromage! No, I mean Steve. Time out. Why are you sticking a robot on us? I'm supposed to be the bad guy this time. <laughs> yeah, you're bad, but I'm secretly worse. It's a twist. Exciting. Unexpected. Well, adventures are supposed to be full of surprises. Whoosh, clank, clank, ha. Betsy, Steve, time to go. Ah. You want us to stop playing right at the exciting part? Well, that means tomorrow you'll start playing right at the exciting part. Hey, that's right! George didn't want to mess everything up by cleaning, but he knew that you couldn't leave toys on the floor. Someone could get hurt. Before we go, help George clean up. It took so long to set all this up, we never got to find out how our high-stakes adventure ended. George thought all night about how he could keep his toys set up. The next day, Betsy and Steve rushed over to play. Ah! Let's set up as fast as we can. No time to waste. Hey! <laughs> he already did it! It's not as big, but it's also not on the floor. Does that mean we don't have to spend time putting it all away? <laughs> You're so smart. Why couldn't I have had a monkey instead of a brother? You guys will never escape! Clank! Clank! There's no escape! But George had an idea. George had to think fast. Okay, now we're tied to the robot. Huh. You'll never get the one! I'm sorry. Huh? I thought it would be okay to set up out here, but it turns out Aunt Augusta's coming over for tea, so I'll need to use the table. That was too bad. Where else could George set up the toys? <gasps> oh. <laughs> Balcony. Great idea. I'll help you set it up out there. You can leave it as long as you want. <laughs> this is great, George. We don't have to waste a lot of time building it and then putting it away. <laughs> Marco's grandmother's birthday, and Marco was planning a big surprise dinner. He had an assistant to help out. Uh -oh. Unfortunately, 
His assistant was a monkey. <laughs> Don't worry, George. It's just the masa. We have more. <laughs> See, masa. You know, cornmeal. That's what I used to make Marco's famous tortillas. See, there's lots of... Uh, uh-oh. I thought we had more. <laughs> if there was one thing George knew how to do, it was to fix things. <laughs> this was the first time he'd broken food, but he knew where food came from. The store. Masa? Oh, I am so sorry. I just sold my last bag. Oh. But I promised my grandmother I'd make tortillas for her birthday. She was so excited. Plus, it's the only thing I know how to make. Hang on. I think you're in luck. The delivery man is here. Hey, it's Uncle Enrique. Uncle Enrique, it's Grandma's birthday. Your abuela's birthday? Muy fantástico. You're going to make your famous tortillas, of course. Of course. Ah. Only... Only? We're out of masa. Oh, no. No masa, no tortillas. But it turns out you're in luck. You have masa on your truck? Do I have masa? Come on, do I have masa? Uh, no, actually, I don't. Mm? But I know where you get some. <laughs> Yay! Mm. We'll have your masa in un momento. You're not going to believe this warehouse. <laughs> si, si. That's where packaged food in the store comes from. Hmm. Trucks like mine get food from warehouses like this and deliver it to grocery stores all over the city. Boys, prepare to be amazed. Wow! It's one of the biggest warehouses in the city. It has everything. If they don't have masa, nobody does. Don't got it. What? Sorry. You're telling me that in this whole entire warehouse there isn't one bag of masa? Not one? I've had calls all week, still waiting on a shipment. Unless... Mm -hmm. We had a pallet that came down one bag short last week. I think maybe it fell off up there. All the way up there? <laughs> if anyone was an expert on up there, it was George. Hey, lucky one of us is a monkey. <laughs> the warehouse manager was right. There was one bag of masa left. Marco's birthday surprise was saved. Try to climb down with a bag in your hands. Just toss it. Ah. Toss it to me. Just toss it down. I'll catch it. Just toss it. Okay. I'm ready. Let her rip. Watch out! What? <gasps> oh, so sorry. I was talking to... Uh, can't see. Uh. No, no. On the first day of summer, George and Bill always played a game of Monkey Rules Baseball. two strikes. So here it is, the pitch that will decide the entire game. Ready? Got it, got it, got it, got it! Don't got it! 
Monkey Rules Baseball is pretty much the same as regular baseball. You run around the bases, but then it gets complicated. You have to touch a fence. Something blue. A cow. And the man with the yellow hat. Safe. I assumed you touched a cow. <laughs> that makes it a tied score. I guess you'll have to play one more game to decide the title. <laughs> Sorry, no can do. As a newspaper delivery specialist, I know from sad experience the dangers of getting overheated. We need to cool off. We should take an inaugural dip in my pool. We'll cool right down once we get into that uh, tank of green stuff. Huh? Algae. A city kid like you probably doesn't know this. But even though algae looks like grass, it's actually a lot of tiny organisms that grow in the water. Guess I should have covered the pool last fall. <laughs> the proper way to handle a situation like this is to dump it out and fill it with clean water. Ready. One, two, three! <laughs> it's not working. <laughs> You lift the bottom, and I'll pull the top to flip it over. <laughs> well, this isn't going to work. <sighs> we need a bulldozer to turn this over. <laughs> a shovel? <laughs> Not exactly the bulldozer I had in mind. Good idea, but it's going to take forever. Hang on, I know! Perfect! Here. We've only emptied that much? Ugh, these sure aren't moving enough water. I need a break. So hot. Good idea. The shade is a lot cooler. I'll pour some lemonade. Given up. <gasps> I know. <sighs> I'm a genius. Don't move, George. I'll make you a really long one. <laughs> I'll just stick a bunch of straws together. Okay. That should be long enough. Sucking lemonade through that long straw turned out to be hard work. But eventually, it came. And kept coming. The straw wanted to keep going. How did the lemonade come out of the straw by itself? Oh, okay, let's go empty that pool. Then we can really cool off. Ah. 